Useful design ideas, making a 12 volt portable power supply, incorporating a reversible water pump for use with water or fuel. I made one of these a while ago for filling the fuel tank of a radio controlled model aircraft that I was working on. Unfortunately though, I forgot to charge the battery, so when I did come to use it, it didn't work. That's why I've bought a new one and here it is. This battery is the same brand that I previously used. Why do I need to use this? I'm not going to use it on a model aeroplane, I'm going to use it on a model aeroplane engine built by my friend Andrew, which currently refuses to start. What follows is a short extract from when I first put this power panel in a box. I'm going to check that the pump in the power panel works OK. I've connected the two pieces of silicone rubber tubing. The pipe with the fuel filter goes into the fuel bottle and the other pipe goes to the tank filler. The fuel filter on the pipe is very important. I'm only going to part fill the tank and with the amount of fuel that I'm putting in the tank, this engine would run for quite a long time. With some fuel in the tank, I used the electric starter that also plugs into the power panel to rotate the engine to make it go. I don't have the glow plug connected, but there's a health and safety warning this is not a good idea. I'm just showing how the starter motor rotates the crankshaft to start the engine. And with all six of my fingers left, I'm going to move on to the next part of this episode. These are called banana plugs, and I fitted a couple of these on the end of the wire to the starter motor, which plugs into the power panel. I'm showing an alternative way of connecting the starter using a couple of crocodile clips. I also have one of these, it's a self-powered glow clip. This connects to the engine's glow plug to energise it so that it starts. This one is fitted with a dry cell, it's just a Duracell, not a rechargeable battery. Later on when I show a close-up of the power panel, you'll see that there is a connection for a glow clip lead and also a connection to charge one of these portable glow plug units. Here's the box that I'm going to use to fit the parts that I previously did fit to it before the battery went flat. Everything is there except for the screws. I don't really know where they went. Here's the power panel sat on the bench. I'm just unravelling the silicone tubing and now you can see what it is. These are not expensive things to buy, they are very cheap indeed. This one's a bit dusty, I'm giving it a clean. Back in the day before my two youngest daughters were born, I used to be obsessed with building and flying radio controlled models. But I felt that taking two small children down to the flying field was asking for trouble, it's a dangerous place. And that is how I initially got into live steam. There's not much chance of a locomotive falling from the sky and hitting you at 150 miles an hour. Here's a close-up of the power panel. As you can see, there is a glow starter charger. There is also a 1.2 volt output for a standard wired type glow clip. The two banana sockets above each other are for the starter motor. And then the switch allows you to fill or empty the tank by reversing the direction of the pump. You may be thinking, when it's all together in the box, how do I charge it? That's quite simple, I plug the battery charger into the positive and negative outlets that powers the starter motor, because these connections go directly to the battery. While I'm wrestling with the silicone rubber tubing, I would just like to mention that this piping can be used for draining and filling boilers. I've put one end of the piece of silicone rubber tubing into the boiler, and this is very important, the other end goes into a tub of water. That's right, water, not glow fuel. This is a Castle Steam V6 boiler, 6 inches in diameter, and it's quite big. To fill it with water when it's empty takes quite a long time. I have to use the hand pump, as shown here, which is quite labour intensive. As shown earlier, it's also useful for filling and draining smaller boilers, like this Cotswold Heritage model. It's a copper boiler, so it's not going to go rusty, but it's always a good idea to remove the water when the boiler's not in use, especially during the winter months. Here's a box that I used originally. I bought a couple of these a few years ago from RDG Tools. At one time they contained machine tooling, and these boxes are very well made. A few years ago I had a power panel fitted into one of these, hence the redundant piece of plywood mounting. The original power panel that I had was very slim, and it fitted down inside the box. This one's a bit deeper. 
So I cut some pieces of mahogany to fit and screwed them together to mount the panels securely in place. I would open the box like this, dropping the lid down at the front. This gives me a suitable area to store things like the glow clipper, fuel filter or even the starter motor. As I mentioned earlier, for some reason I lost all of the original fixing screws, so here I'm improvising with some out of a box of random screws. These screws underneath the box are a bit on the big side. I'll try and find some smaller ones when I go in the workshop. I think these screws are drywall screws. Anyway, they're very sharp, very pointy and a bit too long. Here I'm shortening some of them so that they don't stick out inside the box. I'm shortening these screws because of something that happened many years ago. I fitted a car radio for a friend of mine and the main fixing screws were a bit long and little did I know that there was a wire very close to one of these screws which over appeared with the vibration as it was a motor vehicle set fire to his dashboard. There wasn't a lot of damage but the white powder fire extinguisher that he had made a right mess inside the car. I'm using completely the wrong type of screws for this part of the job. I'll change them in due course. I'd like to mention the necessity of using fuel filters on the inlet to these pumps. This is a gear pump and it is easily blocked by any debris in the water or the fuel. I once burnt out one of these pumps by draining the water from the bow tank of a model steamboat that had made. I didn't have a filter on the inlet and picked up some debris which jammed the pump's gears and promptly burnt it out. In this clip I've drawn an arrow on the box to show which way up it is. I may be wrong here but the previous battery that was in this box did actually leak electrolyte when it was on its side. Who knows maybe it was a faulty battery but by having a large arrow pointing up I know which way up it is. I thought it would be a good idea to put some pads on what is now the underside of the box and for this I'm using some cyanoacrylate adhesive or super glue and a couple of pieces of Scotch-Brite. And yes I do know that the Scotch-Brite is gritty and abrasive and I do not ever intend to put this box on a dining room table that's polished. When I was in my 30s I spent an awful lot of time flying radio control models in my spare time and I used to have the battery inside my field box and cut a hole in the field box itself to mount the power panel. This was not a good idea because I kept the glow fuel in there too. While on the subject of glow fuel, this is the stuff I'm going to use to attempt to start Andrew's engine. Allegedly it contains 25% nitromethane. So with a bit of luck, Andrew's engine may burst into life, but I'll find out shortly. I'll leave this video showing what happened last week when we tried to start Andrew's engine on the bench using what's called a chicken stick a bit of chicken sticking flicking or whichever way you want to pronounce it it didn't start and that's it from me for now stay safe stay healthy thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful please take the time to visit my mainstream models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back